Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So I've got a video for you today that I've been meaning to do for quite some time and I just found the time today so I thought I'd get this out to you guys. Now I over the last handful of years of, of putting myself out there on Instagram and YouTube and stuff um, I get a lot of people reaching out to me which I fully welcome. Guys for those of you that have tagged along for the last little while I think you all know that I, I'm more than willing to help out in any way shape or form that I can help the community whether it's to do with these cars or any other thing that I'm talking about or working on. But the question is, you know, what to look for in a clean Fox body. How do you find a good one? Where do you go? Um, what to look for specifically if and when you find one. So now, uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, I have this 1991 GT convertible that I just recently purchased here in the spring of 2021, okay? Now I also have this green coupe. I don't know that I want to use that as my example of a clean car, even though in my opinion it is. I've owned it since 97, so I don't know that it really does the video justice in that, you know, I bought it very new or newer and uh, I just kept it and kept it up for all these years whereas the 91 convertible I've just recently bought and it's had 30 years to uh, be in other people's hands and just to let you know that I, I mean I, I guess there are still very good examples of, of cleaner cars out there that can be obtained and I wanted to show you the things that I look for you know let's say for example I'm at a car show and I'm looking at someone's car these are the things that I look for that I go yep that's a very very good car very clean car if someone's selling one at a car show and I go yeah you know what it's worth the money or it's not or whatever so anyway I'm gonna get you spun around here guys and I'm gonna walk you around this car and just show you what it was that I looked for when I bought this car and I might add I bought this car at a distance okay I'm up in Canada and this car came from Texas so the folks that I met, thank goodness, you know, like they're just unreal people that I still stay in touch with to this day. Um, they were more than willing to show me all of these things via pictures and video, uh, you know, FaceTime calls and things of that nature. So yeah, there's, there's good folks out there that can help you in this process too, right? If you know what to look for. So anyway, without further ado, I'll get you spun around here and I'll show you some of these things that you got to watch out for. All right, guys, first things first. So we're under the hood and what I want to point out to you, this is something that I look for. Now it's not a necessarily a deal breaker, but these are one of the things that I immediately gravitate towards. So you see here and over here on this fender and then up here on the hood. So those are original VIN tags that are original to this car. Now, they reside on other panels as well. I'll show you here uh, on the trunk. Okay, now they're also on the doors. You got to go digging a little deeper for these guys. Right here. Okay, so now what this tells you is that you've got original panels. Uh, same thing on the driver's side as well. Okay, I'll just show you that real quick. Okay. Uh, that's a good indication that you're dealing with original equipment. So essentially, it, you got to fill in the blanks a little bit, but the story that it tells me is that this fender's never been changed, that fender, this hood, you know, and just think to yourself, well, chances are it's probably never had any front end damage, right? here now again those of you that have watched my channel know that this car has been resprayed at one point in time uh, hence the reason this one's all mucked up but um, yeah gives you a good indication that you're dealing with original panels original equipment and chances are even if it has had a little bit of a fender bender they've fixed it was minor because they were able to fix the original equipment back to what it was Okay guys, now for this next one, uh, you got to get a little dirty and you got to roll onto the car, okay? But, what I want to show you here 
is the torque boxes. Okay, this here is your torque box. You got one on either side. Your uh, lower control arm ties into this. Now, for a car that's been ran really, really hard, these can get tore up. They, they, almost, they tear or crack and tear. Um, there are kits you can buy to stiffen these up, which is never a bad idea to do. But this is a pretty good telltale sign that the car's been ran down a quarter mile with slicks on it or whatever. These will get tore up and beat up, and they're not easy to fix. Um, you best be a, a very skilled uh, metal worker to tune those up, okay? Now, while you're under here, you want to just get a good idea what the floor pan looks like because it's very difficult to tell from the interior of the car, right? Carpet covers it. So check your floor pans out. Um, now this convertible, these have uh, bracing throughout the pinch weld area. I'll maybe show you on my coupe here. This is the pinch weld and uh, this is a common area that can be all beat up and rusted out and this is the start of, of bigger problems. Um, but yeah, check that out. Check your floor pans out, right? Um, just make sure that all of this stuff, at least to the best of your ability, looks good and tight. Um, I'll show you the torque boxes on this guy. Right? It's just good and solid, no tears, no rips, no nothing. Okay, so back under the hood. Um, shock towers okay these are your shock towers for any of you that don't know here and here and these are a common place to have metal rotting and or rusted right out um, they just well they, they take a lot of weather right because the opposite side of these shock towers is inside the front wheel well so if the car lived in the salty winters or rainy uh, parts of the world these can have damage to them and they're a major overhaul to try to replace and or fix back up. Again, maybe if you're a, a, a good tinsmith, you can work with them, but uh, this is another common area that these foxes can suffer. Um, and as you can see, I mean, if you had an issue behind this um, intake tube, well, it's going to be a little harder to see so you got to get in there and really poke around to make sure that those shock towers are good and tight okay and last but not least i want to bring in something that we as human beings are all blessed with and that is your gut feel so if you're looking at a car and you just get a gut feel that this is a bad deal or a bad car or the person you're buying from is not being truthful steer clear there is nothing, and I mean nothing worse in the whole entire world than going against your gut. It's like disappointing your parents. You never ever live it down. It'll haunt you forever. So you gotta bring your gut into this. Now, in some cases, you need to really bring your gut into it because maybe the person you're buying the car from isn't the original owner. Uh, maybe this car's had eight or 10 owners. So, you know, you, you almost need a little bit of a psychic ability, right? You gotta just, sense from the car what it is that you're actually acquiring okay um so guts big uh now you know as far as engines are considered like these old pushrod five liter 302s uh well any of the small block fords really they're, they're pretty tough engines okay and actually i think they're a lot tougher than we used to give them credit for i've seen guys on youtube uh you know running power adders and stuff with a stock block like pretty much stock engine in a fox body and they're like north of 500 horsepower and beating the ever living snot out of them on a quarter mile and nothing happens i mean the old way we used to <clears throat> well me and my buddies used to look at it like you know if you're crowding that 500 horsepower range in a stock two bolt main five liter like this thing is going to crack in half and seems like that's maybe not the case now i don't want to you know overstate any of that like i mean everything has its breaking point so just be aware of that but yeah like th they're a lot stronger than you think and uh i mean the other side of that is is i've got some i've got a really good buddy that uh he's actually handed his car down to his kid it's a pretty cool story 
and this car has got north of 300,000 kilometers, like high miler, okay? And not easy miles either. I was in the car for a lot of them. So, and he's just recently pulled the motor apart and uh, it actually looks really good. So yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you don't know, you know, you got a high level understanding about engines and you know, you're a little worried about like whether or not you're getting a solid heart in the car that you're looking at, just know that they're a lot stronger than they actually uh, are made out to be. And yeah, I, I don't know that engine or transmission for that matter. I mean, let's say you get a bad transmission. Well, you can buy a new, in the manual sense, you can buy a new T5 for 1200 bucks. So not, again, not a deal breaker. I don't worry too, too much about the drivetrain. Gear sets, three, 400 bucks for a full set. You know, you gotta pay someone to put it in. But anyway, those are, are pretty easily fixed, okay? And again, the engines are pretty strong. Now, while I'm on the engine topic, I might mention that something that I'm, I'm weary about is heavily modified cars. And I guess the reason I say that is I, not to take anything away from anyone, but I just, I never know how good a job was done. I don't think anybody ever does. If you're speaking with someone that's like a master engine builder and stuff, okay, then obviously you can take their word for it. But like, if some guy in a backyard did it, hell, I mean, it's kind of me. I'm a backyard guy, really. Um, you know, you're gonna have to trust that I torqued everything to the proper specs, uh, used the right equipment, everything inside that engine's hidden. So they could tell you that it's got all of this stuff done to it, but really it may not. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I like the more original stuff, at least from a starting point, and then you know you can do it yourself or pay someone to do it and you know what's into it. So yeah, he heavily modified cars tend to, my spidey sense goes off a little bit on that. Uh, you just, you gotta do a little bit more digging on, on that front, okay? Um, but yeah, like the other things, now a big one for me is paint. I, I, I'm not a body man. And uh, however, I do know some people that are in the uh, auto body world and between just supplies, parts and labor being a big one, especially if you want a good proper paint job, right? Like you can spend horrendous amounts of hours just masking a car off like, and you know, those guys, they got to eat too. So they, they charge for it, you know, anyway, big money. If you want a proper paint job, like I don't even want to guess. I'm, eight, 10, like thousands and thousands of dollars, okay, for a good paint job. So, you know, you go out and you find yourself a decent car, let's say, oh, it's a good deal, 12 grand, let's say. Well, you gotta spend 10 grand painting it, now you're at 22, you know what I mean? Like, it's gonna add up real fast if you gotta throw paint in the mix. So, solid paint, for me anyway, is is a good uh, good thing to have. Now this car, I, I knew that about it, it had a respray, had really close pictures of it and stuff. I knew it needed some love in the polishing department, but that was nothing more than my time and a little bit of supply to do that. And it's turned out pretty good. I'd say it's a solid seven and a half, eight out of 10. So yeah, paint's another one. Um, and yeah, like interior bits and pieces, headlights, wheels, tires, brakes, like all that stuff you can get off the shelf. You can get it from any of the big guys, late model resto, CJ Pony Parts, American Muscle, they all sell replacement bits and pieces for these cars. So, um, and they're relatively inexpensive to, to change out. So if you find a really clean car with a bad interior, don't panic, you know, you can, you can find those parts. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm going on and on here. I think that pretty much wraps up what I look for in a good solid car that I wanna potentially buy or I would recommend to someone else to buy. So I hope this helps you out. And if it does, please share it along. Um, that's why I do these videos to help the community out. So yeah, and if you're looking at a car, um, by all means, like hit me up in the comments or, or send me an email, send me some pictures. I'll try and help you out. Um, obviously, you know, I, it's, it's hard for me to say for certain unless I'm there and looking at the car, but uh, I'll try to help you out to the best of my ability if you if you want that help. So yeah, that's it for now, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye for now.